Today we're looking at the 2023 Toyota RAV4 Hybrid. These have been almost impossible for people to find. We happen to get our hands on one, and in fact, you're able to rent this on Turo if you're interested. Taking the next trip, coming to town, definitely check us out, check out the links below. Now, this particular RAV4 is the SE Hybrid all-wheel drive. Being that it's the SE, it's not quite the bottom of the line, it's not quite the top of the line either. It's somewhere in the middle, but I gotta tell you, from my quick driving around in this, it's a lot more to offer than just being middle of the pack. All right, one thing I wanna touch on real quick about the exterior here with the paint color, it's called a midnight blue metallic, and it's actually got blue flake in it. From a distance, it looks back. You get closer, it's got a lot of depth to it, something that's really neat to see on this, and I'm kind of a sucker for unique colors. That paint, paired with these black wheels and some of the other black accents through the car, make it look really sporty and neat. Again, not something you might expect from just an SE or a middle of their tier. Even though it has the black sporty accents and the darker color, the dark wheels, it still has plenty of chrome accents such as the badging, as well as the chrome tips and the nice off color here on the rear fascia. That gives it a little bit of a breakup instead of just being an all black car that you see so often these days. Now noticing here, there is a decent amount of leg room, even for a guy my size, the seat is all the way back. Uh, yeah, my knee bumps here, but it's not in the dash. Plenty of room, right? And you can see on the dash, 40.2 miles per gallon. You can see it says sport and it's got the cool red dial so let you know that you're definitely in sport mode. I actually drive it most of the time in eco mode because it still feels really good to drive that way. Shifter here does really well uh, going through all the gears. Put it here, you shift up and down. It is a CVT, so keep that in mind. It doesn't have true gears to try and shift up through, but it is sequential shifting as far as the CVT goes. The cup holders are big, they're deep, uh, which is nice. The center console offers a lot of space with a couple of USB-C ports. Uh, there are lightning ports. The seats bolster pretty well. I'm happy about that. Uh, they're comfortable to sit in for as long as I have. And I think the designs on the seat looks really cool. Again, love the blue stitching. I think the interior is done really well on here. Uh, no complaints, pretty standard uh, features for the visors. Buttons feel great. No paddle shifters, because no reason. I think getting in the back here isn't too bad. Doing here, you can see that there's a decent amount of space um, even for a long trip, I think, close the door. I probably wouldn't love it, but I can make it work. For a small car like the RAV4 is, I think it's great. And this seat, again, adjusted to me as always. So if you're a tall guy like me, um, you're gonna have plenty of room. Plenty of room for the kids in here too. I've had a few kids in here. Interior has a really neat stitching to it and kind of look, this is their cloth, uh, which actually cleans really well. The blue stitching in it, again, I love the blue stitching. I like red stitching, but since this has the blue accents going throughout, it makes sense. Folding it down, very easy. It's got the all-weather mats that are on the back and go into the back there as well. Um, super easy to operate. Plenty of room, even with this seat all the way back. You don't have to worry about that hitting that. The rear cargo seems to have a decent amount of storage in here. I mean, there's a lot more space than I would have expected for a RAV4. Nice little privacy shade that comes up, so that way it can't be as easy to see if you have some of your personal effects or maybe some valuables that you don't want people just to be able to peek in and see. A lot of cargo space, actually. Again, this is a smaller SUV, uh, nowhere near a full size, but offers a lot of volume for what you're getting. This is a 60-40 split, so you can see that. And you'll know whether this is secure or not. That little red button there will be up if it's not back. As soon as it goes down, it's down, so you know that's not gonna come forward. A great safety feature. A small thing, but really important. You get a decent amount of leg room. Let's see if I climb in here. Yeah, plenty of leg room. Now I know that the seat here can actually go back further. It can also sit up more. Um, if you like that, but plenty of leg room. Plenty of stuff here to put your phones or things like that, which is kind of nice. Uh, to have that, we're seeing that in more cars. Everything's pretty comfortable uh, for the arm space and for the leg space, I can move around quite a bit. All right, so now we're driving the RAV4. Uh, just initial impressions here. Uh, the suspension seems to handle well. It dampens well, there's a lot of construction going on in this area. Uh, and it seems to pick up the road vibrations pretty minimally. Keep in mind, this is the hybrid SE. It's kind of the middle of their package. There are lower options. Um, and there are higher options available. The steering is nimble, it's quick to respond, uh, handles about as what you would expect from a compact SUV. Acceleration is good, the hybrid giving it that additional power that you cannot get from just the standalone gas engine option. 
The brakes feel good. Just getting up to speed here real quick. Yeah, we get up to speed pretty easily with traffic without any problem whatsoever. And I cannot figure out how to get it to show me a digital speed readout. Of all the options we have here, I'm not finding one. So if you know how to get the digital speed, leave in the comment section below. I think it'd be nice to have. So we have eco mode. You have to push it for normal mode. And there's sport, which sport's kind of neat with the red dials. I don't know if that makes a difference for the acceleration. Maybe we can test that out shortly. The UI for this is pretty good. There's not a lot of complaints I have about that. Again, digital readout would be nice, uh, but I don't think that there's really an option for that. Oh, the sport makes a difference. It wants to kick in the power and hybrid at the same time much faster. Now, one thing that I don't particularly like is Toyota's radio system. This is the same one they use on the Highlander and our Sienna as well. This is clearly standard across their platforms. And it doesn't seem to be a big deal now, but if I go to FM radio, make sure it's turned down. Some of the things, if I go to it, it seems like, gosh darn it. As you can kind of see behind it, but why? Why are those even bubbles? Why not make them dedicated buttons? Why show me part of it? That doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to me. Um, it also seems to be, I don't know if it's through intention or not, but deliberately more cumbersome than I feel like it should be. It's not intuitive. There is no actual buttons for everything's on the screen, uh, which can lead you to feel like you're not pressing the right thing. Some of it's swipe, some of it's not swipe. The tap on it is pretty quick when you get it, but I've noticed that sometimes pressing this, you can't always tell where you're at. There's no haptic feedback to know. Did I touch it? Did I not touch it? And so just for me as a driver, I feel like I end up, when I want to use this, paying more attention to it than I should without having the same kind of response that you might get from another system uh, that does offer that. Small complaint, uh, but the other thing is in order to use their navigation, you have to pay for it, which to me is silly that you cannot just have navigation. You have to download it and you have to pay for it and that to me is silly the car is equipped with navigation but no you can't use it it does have apple carplay and it does have android auto which allows you to use your phone's data for that information uh, but it seems silly to just not have it be equipped either it's equipped or it's not equipped i kind of like the old things better when it comes to that the steering wheel feels good um, the button presses feel really nice they don't have some of the weird soft touch that some of the newer cars do which is nice i don't feel like down the road that's going to be a bad thing uh, so that's really nice let's see if we can get up to freeway speeds uh, we kind of already are all right so you can see here that we're still getting 40.2 miles per gallon we have 500 miles till empty and it's varying a little bit with my foot on it uh, the freeway speeds here again about 65 70 depending on where you're at uh, traffic is still moving along you can see i'm going a little over 70 and people are just getting away from me. It's not a big deal. And there's traffic coming up behind us as well. Visibility in here is very good. I can see out of the back very clearly. I can see all around me. I don't feel like I have many blind spots or that I'm uncomfortable to switch lanes at any point without any modification there. So it's, it's been pretty good. All right, so I wanna take a moment, come inside and take a look at what other people think about the different compact SUVs. The Toyota RAV4 is one of many out there. In fact, there's so many, we're not gonna discuss every single one of them in this particular video. But let's talk about some of its major competitors. According to Car and Driver, the Honda CRV is the number one compact SUV available today. Now, they do mention that that depends on your package and some of the options that you get and state that the hybrid is the better performing of the two, similar to the Toyota RAV4 from my experience. Another car that we actually do have as a turbo car, the Volkswagen Tiguan, is listed as number three overall, according to Car and Driver. Now, Kelly Blue Book lists the Honda CRV as number one as well, but the Toyota RAV4 comes in at number three. That's compared to Car and Driver's ranking of the Toyota RAV4 at number eight. But there's a lot of stiff competition in that category there. According to US News, they list the Toyota RAV4 as number seven, tied with several other key competitors that if you were to break it down, it jumps one, two, three, four, seven, ten. So I think a lot of them are very closely compared. The good news for you 
if you're looking to buy one of these vehicles is I still think you'd be very happy with the Toyota route or, and that the competition that really is going to come down to pricing package and fuel economy, which the RAV4 is an excellent value and offers some of the best fuel economy. Speaking of fuel economy, for those who are interested, our particular one out there, and we'll cut to the clip of showing the mile per gallon, we're still getting 40.2 miles per gallon, is currently averaging over 40 miles per gallon. And that's with me driving it. I'm kind of heavy footed. And that's also including having been out using Turo, which click the link below if you're interested in renting one, where other drivers are driving a lot in town and all over the place. So this really gives a good example of how good the fuel economy truly can be without people who are always concerned about having the best fuel economy.